Marty, from the Peter's presentation at ASH meeting about CR, CRI, CRP. So we have different criteria of responses are all equivalent, or at least in somebody well fit where we give three plus seven or intensive chemotherapy, we should limit our responses to CR or CRP at the most, but not the marrow CR and others. Well, some new information that is being presented at this meeting from uh, the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group suggests that uh, response response um, parameters less than CR may not be as good as CR, particularly CRI, uh, both with chemotherapy and, and uh, the novel agent clofarabine. And uh, so I think that um, we have to reevaluate those additional uh, response uh, parameters. Thanks. Definitely agree with you. you know, I want to go to Harry. Uh, you've done a lot of studies with the new agents, Harry, and then as we start discussing, there's not much for this patient, elderly patient we have, or older AML, we have the HMA therapy. So I want to focus on a group of patients who have poor prognosis, they are therapy-related secondary AML. And I know there was a trial with the CPX351 uh, or liposomal formulation. Can you tell me more about it, please? So CPX351 is a liposomal formulation of cytarabine and donorubicin. And there are uh, two uh, interesting components uh, of this uh, agent. The first is that the way that these two drugs were put together in the liposome were informed by preclinical data showing that you get best activity of these two drugs when you have deliver them at a molar ratio of 5 to 1. Um, and so in the liposome, the cytarabine is present in a molar ratio of 5 to 1 of the donorubicin. And the second is the liposomal uh, formulation itself. Um, there's preclinical data and uh, correlative data showing that um, this agent gets incorporated into the bone marrow and donorubicin and cytarabine are released uh, in the bone marrow. So there was a large uh, phase 3 uh, study comparing CPX351 as an induction and as a consolidation versus 3 and 7 followed by uh, 2 and 5 chemotherapy as a consolidation. No high dose RSC there. The patients who are eligible were between the ages of 60 and 75 and they had to have a secondary AML which was defined as treatment related AML. AML that was following um, MDS either pretreated with a hypomethylating agent or not. Um, or AML with uh, complex or MDS-related cytogenetic changes. So that was the patient population. Um, it was a positive study. The re remission rates were higher with CPX351 versus 7 plus 3. The um, mortality at day 30 was lower. Um, the mortality at day 60 was lower with CPX351. And when they looked at um, cause of mortality, more patients had persistent disease who were dying at day 60 with 3 and 7 versus the CPX351. The, the endpoint of the study was survival, and again, there was a statistically significant improvement in overall survival in the patients who received CPX351. When they looked at the subset of patients who went on to receive um, an allogeneic transplant in that first remission, the outcome of allogeneic transplant was better in patients who had achieved their first remission with CPX351 than with 3 and 7. So pretty compelling data that this is a benefit for patients that are defined clinically as having secondary AML, at least in that age group. So you think this drug will get an approval I in do. the near future? I do think it will be approved. Okay. And once approved, do you think there's any subset of patients who will do better with CPX? I know across the board the randomization favors CPX, but among the patients who received the CPX, for example, somebody who failed the cytabine or azacitinine, did they respond still well to uh, CPX? How about the subset? They did. So when they looked at patients who had uh, previously received a hypomethylating agent, it didn't seem to impact on the response rates. An interesting question that will come up, though, are the molecular subsets in this uh, patient population. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Um, uh, uh, Coleman at uh, Dana-Farber uh, did an analysis of the genetics of older AML samples that appeared to be de novo AMLs, but found that the molecular signature was very similar to patients who had clinically secondary AML. It'll be interesting to look at this uh, data from the uh, phase three study or other data with CPX351 and see if there's a particular subset that can be defined by a molecular panel that or a mutational panel that might benefit. And beyond this study, where do you see the drug once it's approved? What is the next step? To use it where? To combine it? Well, I, I, th I think 
it's an interesting time for us because um, with this drug and uh, mitostorin that we'll talk about later, the way we develop um, future drugs in AML is really going to change dramatically because I think we are going to be, um, for the first time in 30 or 40 years, have new standard of cares for subsets of our patients. Um, so I would imagine uh, in terms of just the age population, there is safety data of CPX351 in younger patients in the relapse refractory setting. In fact, I believe your colleague, Dr. Yes, Cortez, uh, published that. And so um, the, the agent may be uh, given also to younger patients. But I would caution that, remember in this trial, the post-remission treatment did not include high-dose cytarabine. And so the full benefit in younger patients who might be able to tolerate a more intensive therapy is still unknown. Okay, but, but, but actually I would just interject the, the interesting point about CPX351, we know in a younger patient population it appears equivalent from an overall survival standpoint to our conventional seven plus three, but we also know from prior studies when we try to incorporate other agents into seven plus three, sometimes the toxicity is too much. By lowering the toxicity, but getting the same efficacy, are we going to have a safer platform to explore more new well, agents? I think that's possible. So it gets back to looking at the toxicity of CPX351 versus 3 and 7 in that phase 1 study. And uh, there, there were less infectious deaths with CPX351, but there actually was more myelosuppression with CPX351, at least during the induction, took longer for counts to recover than with 3 and 7. And so that's definitely going to be something that needs to be considered if other agents that have myelosuppressive abilities are tried, you try to add them to CPX351.